ladies, can you sign in real quick for me? We are all ready to go now. Are you guys presenting over there? Students, your PowerPoints have already been preloaded. I go out there and I say, like, good morning. If you could please take a seat. Our judges are currently on their way back now. Prizes in hand. Oh, here they come right now. Ooh, anxious, a little nerve wracking. Who's gonna win? Take home first place. I think we have a pretty good chance of winning, but I can't get too cocky. I am super excited to announce the first place winner. Drum roll, please. In partnership with Arizona State University, Cisco has launched the Global Problem Solvers Program. There are around 30 teachers and this year currently over 1,500 middle school students participating. They learn about how to solve social challenges and how to use technology to do so. Teachers and students are implementing this program different ways. So some schools are implementing it as an intervention period where they can do it every day during that particular block. Try to come up with something other than contamination. Some schools are doing it as an after school club and some schools are doing it embedded within their core curriculum within the class day. Well, Ed and Verma Pastor Elementary School is really excited to teach our students about entrepreneurial skills because we're really preparing them for jobs that really don't even exist yet. Our teachers really embraced the idea. Last 45 minutes of the day, our eighth grade students participate in the project. Your time starts now. I like the global problem solvers because they tackle actual problems. We need a solution that gets students back to class while their schools recover from the hurricane. Any ideas? And it's not something that is like so out of reach that can't really be solved. After I twisted my ankle, Kelly's first aid kit helped me walk again. Let's say we created a first aid kit, but for classrooms. If you start teaching kids from a young age about these problems, they'll be inspired to solve more problems as they get older. The project is great for cross-curriculum collaboration. I, as a social studies teacher, the math teacher, and the science teacher, we can all work together within our curriculums and can handle very specific parts of the project. You can show them the roadmap, how it starts, brainstorming, choosing a problem, how to design it. And designing has many multiple steps within it. They learn a, a problem can have many types of solutions. It took us a while to come up with anything. And once we found out, we got excited and started finding out how we we're gonna make it. They work on a prolonged project for a whole year. Don't try to constrain yourself. You can make whatever, right? Today, the students focused in on their problem that they're going to be passionate about solving. Some of the social problems that the students are taking on are very wide range. It could be a big global problem. It could be something that just targets their specific community. The problems we're working on now, it seems like we're trying to better the life we're going to have later. I've learned that when like, you're trying to solve a problem, you have to stay persistent with it. You're not like alone and you have other people to help you. I believe that project-based learning always helps in building 21st century skills. Arizona State University works to provide middle school teachers with all sorts of different training on the GPS curriculum. Here is our GPS team mascot. Throughout the year, we provide content. We also give teachers time just to talk and share how things are going. I got to work with a completely different school and we had to create this new prototype using everyday objects like Play-Doh or pens or snap bracelets. Going through this process with the teacher and going through all of the steps also helps us think about all of the roadblocks, hiccups, pitfalls that we might see in working with our students. So we decided to create um, an attachment to our water bottle. I've been able to put myself in the role of the student as a learner, as a innovator. That's a lot more challenging because I have to come up with solutions and I have to create a pitch, I have to create a business model plan, and those are definitely things that I have never done before as a teacher. I learned how to create solution incorporating all kinds of technology related equipment. Today the students were working on physical prototypes of their devices so they can show in a very in-depth way how it would actually go about solving the problem. I was trying to get them to incorporate the technology aspect that's going to be necessary for any device to be able to use data 
They're gonna start working on their five minute pitch to uh, really make their message as effective as possible. We're gonna pick uh, a couple groups at random. We're gonna go ahead and start over here with group four. So the problem that we have around the world is that a lot of people overdose over pills. Basically our product, there would be a sensor or a chemical inside the pill that wouldn't let you overdose. Hey, time. Uh, what I really love the most is probably the business model canvas just because it shows the kids everything that it takes to be a social entrepreneur. It really does give our students so many different sorts of life skills, content skills, and that will be of great benefit to them in high school, in college, in the workplace. Teachers build wonderful relationships with the kids because they get to work with them so closely. You can go ahead and have your stuff packed up. After the uh, business model canvas, they had a community showcase. They were presenting multiple times to multiple people and we chose the overall winner that's gonna represent the school in the citywide competition. Today we are going to quickly review what we learned and how we are going to show our talent tomorrow. We've been working on our project to decrease the amount of car accidents due to being intoxicated. We created a device that can easily be installed into your car. I've known people who have been through stuff like this and it, I can see how badly it hurts them. I just thought it was a, something important to deal with. So this is our prototype and you have to install it into your car so that every time you get in, you're going to have to go through tests. It has a pin, so that way you can like identify that it's you. After you put in the pin, you put your eye up to the camera, and then the breathalyzer is obviously going to detect any sort of alcohol that you might have. We use deodorant because it has alcohol. The red means it has high alcohol in it. Well, it's fun to work with technology because in other projects, we just have to like do an essay or something. But this, we're able to like gather resources and create stuff. It's better than any other like project we've done. We were selected from Pastor to go to the showcase tomorrow. It was pretty nerve wracking when they told us that we were the first from our school, but I feel like on the long run, it's gonna be good. This one will be yours, okay. So I should be first. We're gonna start with the pitch competition. Students, we're gonna call you up. Well, our solution is a CO2 sensor. The sensor will send out data it collects about air pollution levels and send it to an app on your phone. The IoT device is a simple bracelet. It will collect data on where kidnapping has happened. Ed Pastor, you all can come on up. How's everyone doing today? I was talking, I looked at the cards and my hand was shaking like crazy. Okay, I have a question for you guys. And then I was just trying to have fun with everyone, try to make it seem like I wasn't nervous. How many of you know someone who has been injured in a car due to drugs or alcohol? The problem we are trying to solve is the amount of injuries caused by driving while intoxicated. I had rehearsed the same thing over and over again when we were sitting down, but it was, oh, what if I mess up? I will send a message to contact to come pick you up. Each school did an amazing job. At this time, myself and the judges are going to deliberate. I haven't made my final decision. I just want to say thank you again to everyone who came out to participate. Yeah. You could see how much time it took. Yeah. All the family, the friends, the teachers, everyone who put their blood, sweat, and tears in. We are so honored to see your projects. Oh, wow. It's really good. They, they really thought it through. They're really good. I like it. And I am super excited to announce the first place winner. So, drum roll, please. Ed Pastor. We won first place winning a computer. This is extremely exciting for all of us because we worked all year. It finally all paid off. I think my students did a great job. They are so good in their roles. You guys are the young people that are going to be like the change that we need, and so I'm super excited that I had the opportunity to, to be here and work with you guys. The Global Problem Solvers Program empowers students so that they're able to see themselves not as the consumers of technology, but the designers of the technology, and they understand that they have the power to create any product that they want to. Yes, they may face these barriers. Yes, you may be a first-generation college student. Yes, you're a person of color, but you still have what it takes to be successful.